Welcome to part two of the mouse tutorial. So in the previous tutorial, I was showing you how to create the wire armature and how to wrap the wall around the body. So the one thing we didn't do in the last tutorial is wrap the arms because I wanted to leave those. And that's because I'm going to use the white gotland on the arms because we want to keep the arms nice and thin. I don't want to add too much bulk. So I'm just going to go straight in with the white gotland on the wire here and add that in so that we can add a little bit more later on but we don't need to add too much more. So I've got my long strip of white gotland wall bats here and I'm just going to pull myself a very fine long thin piece and it needs to be thin really just to get that kind of nice fine slim arm. So I'm just going to get rid of those horrible bulky wall bits just make sure it's all relatively even and just going to give it a little tug to get it nice and even down the wall that I've got and then what I'm going to do I'm going to take my wax and I'm just going to scrape some of that wax onto my nail rub it between my fingers like we did with the the tail and the hands and feet earlier when we were adding the pink merino so I'm going to put my wall over the back of the mouse and then I'm going to pull it so that it's so the armature is kind of sitting over it okay so it's nice and tall and I'm going to hold it nice and close what you don't want to do is is hold it too far away and the wall breaks off it's very much like hair wall so you need to hold it nice and close to get that tautness and then just wrap it round like we did earlier. Now what you'll find is you've obviously got this thickness here where we've added the pink merino, the pink merino wall bats. So we need to try and get this wall um, as thick, if not slightly thicker than this, but we don't want to, like I said, go too thick. So holding it nice and close, I'm going to take it all the way up to about a centimetre. I'm going to leave this bit exposed and then I'm going to fold it back up again. I'm going to give that an untwist. It's twisting on me. It's being misbehaving, the Scotland wall today. And as you're, as you're twisting it, if you find that you get any sort of bulky areas forming, you, kind of, you can kind of pull the wall backwards slightly as you pull it taut. And that will stop sort of any kind of nasty lumps and bumps. And then you just want to keep going all the way to the top, then bring it back down again. This time, don't bring it up to this bulky bit because we don't want to add any more bulk to this. So just take it up to the finest bit where you would have like an elbow and then bring it back on yourself again. Okay, and then I'm just going to go one more, keeping it nice and tight, back down. And then I'm just going to go back up again, just to create more of that kind of shoulder and slightly thicker top part of the arm. And then once I've got a little bit of excess, I'm just going to felt that down just down the side again, side of the arm, so I'm not hitting the wire, just so it doesn't unravel. I'm just going to get rid of that bit that we were using to anchor it into place and felt that down. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other arm. So I'm just going to felt this a bit, just to get it a bit tighter and a bit neater. There we go. So I will see you in a moment when, I do, when I've done the second arm. Right, so both his arms are wrapped nice. So what we want to do is we want to add some more bulk to the body. So I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to bring in my trusty brush mat. And we're going to make some panels to add to our mouse body. So I'm going to go back in with my fox sheet wall and I'm going to take a section that is roughly about about kind of three and a half inches by about two and a half inches and then I'm just going to pull that apart slightly so I'm holding it far away and then I'm pulling gently I'm not holding it really tightly and I'm just pulling it away and then just layering it back onto each other so I've kind of added four layers there so you've got a bit of bulk I'm then going to take my felting tool my seven needle felting tool and I'm going to stab downwards keeping your hands out of the way into the wall and then I'm just going to take any loose ends and I'm just going to fold them over and 
you might want to make some notes of measurements with this bit just so you don't have to keep referring back to the video. So I'm just going to felt this down. So then we've got this small square and we're going to use this to start creating bulk around the tummy and it measures one and a half inches by one and a half inches there or thereabouts. So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, but you're aiming for this kind of size. So that's going to be part of the tummy. We're going to take some more of our wool bats and we're going to make another section for the tummy now. So this is going to be the lower part of the tummy where we want more bulk. What I want to do now is make a piece that goes up towards the neck. So it's going to be slightly longer. So I'm going to take two pieces now, one over the top, and then I'm just going to, again, hold them far away. Don't hold them too tightly and just pull them apart. And this piece is going to be about five inches in length and about two inches in width before it's felted down. And then again, I'm just going to felt it onto the brush mat. And we want to create something quite narrow, but that covers the entire torso of the mouse. ends over and I'm going to fold these side bits in as well so I'm folding them in by about a couple of centimeters keep it nice and narrow and then this piece as well okay there we have it so that's the second piece so that's going to go over the top next I'm going to create one last piece and this again is for the torso so I'm going to tear this away just going to pull a few layers over the top of each other to create a bit of thickness. Get rid of that. Spread it out a bit more. This piece is going to be more triangular. So I'm going to start from the top, felting downwards, and then you're going to have a point at the bottom, like this. Then I'm just going to fold over that top half there so I've got an edge. And I'm just going to fold these sides here in on a bit of an angle. And the same on this side as well. And it's just to build, again, build bulk up for your mouse. Because we don't want to, we don't want to have a really super skinny mouse. I like a, a nice chunky mouse. And then this top piece here, I'm just going to fold over and felt that down. Like so. So you've got, and you can, if it's a little bit on the wonk, just give it a bit of a pull and the wall stretches nicely. So it's kind of a bit of a weird kind of triangular shape. So this, so this bit's slightly narrower and this bit's slight, slightly wider. And it's kind of like a weird triangular shape. This slight, and it's kind of like a weird triangular shape. This bit's slightly narrower and then you've got this bit at the bottom which is, which is slightly wider. So that's what we've got for our tummy so far. The next thing we want to do is make his bum. And I'm thinking, Let's go all out there. Let's go Kim Kardashian. Let's go, let's go with, a, with a good booty. So I've got my wool here. I've got quite a bit of wool here. And I'm just going to tear it, fold it on top of each other until I've got about eight pieces on top. Okay? And then I'm just going to felt that down. The thicker the amount is obviously going to have more resistance. It's going to be a bit harder to felt. But fear not. Okay, so we're not actually going to fold anything in here, we're just going to leave it loose. I'm just going to flip it over and felt the other side just to tack it into place. But we don't need to do too much more with that. We're going to create more structure and shape as we go along, but this is a great piece to kind of get that initial bottom going. So I'm going to put that to one side um, and then I'm going to make my next piece, which... So I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to make my next piece, which is the head. So I'm just going to pull this apart again and I'm just going to take a long strip this time and then I'm going to just pull this long strip in half and then bring it over each other like this. And then I'm probably just going to take these ends and just place them in the middle as well, just to create a bit more bulk like that. So you've got this long piece of wool, which is measuring 
uh, about 10 inches by about 2 inches. And apologies, those last pieces I made, the bottom was 2 inches by 4 inches. And this sort of triangular piece, piece that I made was sort of about 2 and a half inches in the middle and it was about two and a, oh, about three inches in height, if you want to make a note of that. Okay, so we're gonna felt this down dead through the middle so it all sits together nicely. And then I'm just gonna, once I've felt it down the middle, I'm just gonna fold over these wispy ends into the middle. and then the same on the other side. And once you've got the middle section felted, just go down the ends. And I'm just gonna fold that over so we haven't got any wispy ends because it's just easier to felt into later on. And then I'm gonna just turn it round and I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Felt those bits down. And I'm just going to felt them over. Like so. So you should have a piece that's measuring roughly, and again, it doesn't matter if it's longer, you don't want it to be shorter than this. You want it to be either this length or slightly longer. So it's six inches in length and it's two inches in width. <clears throat> so I'm gonna move that to one side and I'm gonna make the final piece that we're gonna need for the time being, which is the top part of the head. So again, I'm just taking a small amount of wool, folding it over each other. I'm just gonna felt down with my multi-tool. We're creating a circular shape here. And I'm just gonna bring those ends in so we've got a nice, neat finish to the circle. It doesn't matter too much if it's not overly neat. It's all going to get covered over. Again, it just makes it easier to felt against later on if you've got a more of a structured edge to it. Okay, so there we go. So let's take this out of the way and bring back the felting mat. So we're going to give our kind of Frankenstein mouse a bit of cosmetic work now. He's going to the cosmetic surgeon and we're gonna add some bulk in for him. So the first bit we're gonna add is our tummy. So you want to place this piece right at the very bottom, just above where the legs are, okay? And I'm gonna hold it into place and I'm gonna felt down the sides first because remember, we've still got that wire in place. So I'm gonna use my medium needles to just felt that down into his body. And just use light stabbing motions. Don't go hell for leather and go really deep with this. Just go quite nice and bouncy and always, always taking the needle out in the same direction that you put it in. So once you've got this bit felted down, these ends here are gonna fold round. So I'm gonna hold this down and then I'm gonna felt this loose bit. So my finger's well out the way and I'm just gonna felt this down here into the back of the body. And then once that's tacked into place, I can take that finger away and I can just felt down that last piece and then spin it round and do the same on the other side. So if you kind of use a kind of a side, felt into the side of the mouse, so you're not penetrating the middle, it locks it nicely into place. Okay, so that's the first piece. So now you want to add your second piece. Again, you want it to be probably a little bit past the legs, but not too past. So it's kind of where you've got this thick piece here, let it sit there, because we can add a bit of bulk then to the thighs, you see. And then it's gonna sit roughly under the armpits. So I'm gonna hold that in place. And now you've added that first piece, this piece will be a bit easier to add. So same technique as before. I'm just kind of going up and down in a light bouncy stabbing motion, nothing too crazy. And then I'm also, this time, just felting a little bit against the top half of the legs 
his little, his cute little thighs. Okay, and then I'm just gonna felt towards the top and get that locked into place. Give him some gas and air to make sure we can't feel anything. And then once I've got the front sort of tacked down, it doesn't have to be really well felted at this point, we just want it tacked. I'm just gonna again go to the sides and I'm gonna felt this loose piece under his armpit and get that nicely tucked away. So that's not gonna get in the way later. And then I'm just gonna go over that little mouse thigh and just kind of felt against the sides of that just to get that tacked down as well. It just gives him a bit more shape to his body than you see. And then finally, I'm gonna add the last piece for the moment, which is the triangular piece. And I'm just gonna place that over the top of the mouse again, roughly in the same position as the second piece we added. And I'm just gonna felt that down too round sides and then working across with those light stabbing motions again. And then just carefully, always go cautious when you're felting around the legs because they're a lot more densely wrapped and obviously you've got wire very close to where you've wrapped as well. So the last thing you wanna do is get a needle stuck and snap a needle because I find that incredibly upsetting. So you don't wanna do that. So just be cautious when you're doing that. So this piece is now going slightly over the shoulder area where we've added. So we just want to kind of tuck it over the top of the, the shoulders of the mouse if it comes over. We don't want it to kind of encroach too much on the arms, but if it does come over, it's not a problem. And then I'm just kind of tucking any looseness under the arms and around the arms as well. Going down the side of the mouse. And as you um, add more bulk and as you add the top coat to your mouse, the white gotland, you'll be able to do more shaping. So this is the kind of trickier bit at the moment because we're kind of hitting wire a little bit. But once you've got more bulk in place, the felting will become a lot easier. So once again, I'm just gonna felt down these, these side bits here into the back. Don't worry if it's a bit too bulky at the moment around the legs because we're going to sort that out later. Just give it a bit of a felt for the time being and we'll we'll come back to that when we come to add the white gotland wall later on. Okay, so I'm just going to give him a bit more of a felt around the tummy now. Felt that down. And then once that's in place, the next thing I'm going to do is add his bottom. So I'm going to take the larger piece that we made a moment ago, which we've left it all kind of fluffy on the outside, and I'm gonna place it over what would be his bottom area. Um, and you want it to go a little bit past the top of where the tail is, but not too far past, okay? It's quite a large piece, this bit. It's kind of incorporating the back into it as well, but we are gonna add more bulk to the bottom, so don't worry too much. And we're just gonna felt it down in the same way that we did a moment ago. And we're gonna bring these sides round to the front of the mouse. So I'm gonna felt this down and I will see you in a moment. So I felted down most of the bottom, but I just wanna show you this section. So as I said before, it's gone past the tail a little bit, which means you've got this kind of, this looseness um, wall, this loose wall that's kind of hanging down by the legs. So what we wanna do is we wanna felt that um, using our needles so they're kind of on the, on the vertical and use them to kind of push the wall around the thighs and the tail to kind of tuck them out of the way. So same with this one, so I'm holding them on a bit of a vertical and then just using them to tuck that wall out of the way, like so. And then you can give it a bit more of a, a felt around. Okay, so you don't need to worry about going too tight at the moment, but as long as you've got that bulk in place. I'm just gonna go around here and just get in. Get it kind of, so it's like a medium squidge. We don't want it to be really, really hard. We just want it to have a bit of a medium squidge to it so we can add more worn to it and just develop the shape of our mouse. 
Right, so we've added the first few layers to our mouse's body. So the next thing we want to do is add the head. So I'm going to take the strip that we made, which is six inches long, and I'm going to put my mouse onto it so that there's about a couple of centimetres exposed. That's probably about an inch to be fair, actually. About an inch exposed, and then you've got the, the majority of it kind of coming out towards you. I'm going to fold this shorter piece over onto the, the, the head slash neck that we've wrapped, keeping it nice and tight and close to where the neck is. And then I'm just going to felt that down. Again, sort of concentrating on the sides, trying to keep my fingers out of the way. Don't worry about this bit being all loosey-goosey at the moment, okay? We're going to sort that out. So once that's felted down, we're going to take this other piece and we're going to fold it over in the opposite direction. We're going to fold it round until there's no more and then just felt that down. Just really try and focus on getting it down into the neck and felting this wall into what is the kind of chest area. So it kind of bonds the wall together. And make sure that you get rid of any looseness around the shoulder area as well. So get that nice and tight. The same as when we added the bottom wall a moment ago, you just wanna keep your needles on a vertical and then just kind of tuck that wall out of the way. Just go around again to get that nice and consolidated into the piece. Okay. So the next bit we're going to do is we're going to add a top to our head. So we're going to take the last piece that we made. And this is probably one of the trickier bits because you're not against the wall as much. So please don't stab yourself. And I'm sure there'll be other needle felters out there that will be thinking, what's she doing? But this is the only way. I can't do it like this. It's too difficult. So I have to hold it up like this. So I've got my thumb and my forefinger and I'm going to felt down right into the middle. So they're out of the way. The needles are far away from my fingers. I'm going downwards. Okay, so now that's put downwards. I'm then going to hold my fingers sort of out of the way again and I'm going to go down the sides. So felting this loose bit into the wall that we've already added, that piece that we wrapped around. Just felt those down. And then turn it round and do the same thing on the other side. Felting it into the wall that we've wrapped and consolidating all the pieces together. And he's starting to take form. It doesn't look too mousy yet, but he is starting to look a little bit less just like a kind of a wire object. Okay, so that is your first stage of the wrap. So we're gonna add some more wool now, just to really add to the shape of the body. So I'm gonna start off with the bottom and the hips. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna felt this down a bit more and get this really compacted. So we've got a nice sort of triangular shape in between his legs. Just give it a bit of a felt around the rest of the body as well. Okay, I'm going to go back to my wall and I am going to take again another strip, but this time I'm going to get it slightly wider. And I'm going to do four folds. So one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to do three folds one, two, and finally three. Okay, I'm going to tear that excess away and I'm just going to hold it on the mat and I'm just going to felt it down so it doesn't unravel. So that measures three inches in length and one and a half inches in width. So I'm going to take the piece that I didn't use, that I've torn, torn away, and I'm going to do the same thing again. One, two, three. So it's roughly the same size as the first piece. Again, tear away the excess, and I'm just going to felt that down so it doesn't unravel. 
Okay, so you've got two pieces that are roughly the same size now. So we're going to add some shape to his sort of the belly and the hips. So I'm going to place this piece so that it comes just above the pink foot, but it comes up to under his armpit. Okay, and I'm going to hold this down and I'm going to felt it carefully with my fingers holding down the wall and my needles kind of felting down the sides of the mouse to create a bit more bulk there. And just gradually work your way upwards. And once you've kind of secured down half of the wall, you can let it go and then you can just spin it round and then felt down the rest. So your fingers are out of the way and don't really need to do anything now. Felt that round. Remember under the arm, keeping it nice and tight. We want to try and not have too much bulk around the tops of the arms because later when we add our head wrap, we're going to end up with more bulk there anyway. So we want to try and limit the amount of bulk that's here at the moment. Otherwise, it's going to be too bulky and look a bit strange. And then I'm just going to felt this bit under here. And I'll be back in a moment when I felt it down the second piece. Okay, so I've added the second piece, so he's really starting to take shape now. What I want to do next is I want to add another wrap to his belly. So I'm going to take my fox sheep again. I'm going to take another widish section. And I'm just going to fold that. Again, one, two, three, let's go with four. So it's about the same size as the previous pieces I added and I'm going to go straight across his belly area there and I'm just going to felt that into place. Quite possibly our mouse might start to look like he could have diabetes. He is going to be quite big but like I said nobody wants a skinny mouse. You want to have a nice chunky mouse and he looks all cute and cuddly then doesn't he? Rather than being all skin and bones. So I'm just going to felt this down and now that I've got quite a lot of bulk here I can actually penetrate the mouse quite easily without worrying about hitting any wire and breaking my needles. So it's definitely getting easier the more bulk that is added. Obviously still be cautious, don't kind of be too blasé about it but, um, but it certainly is a lot safer to go in with your needles a lot more deeply. Deeper penetration. Okay, so I'm just gonna felt down this top section here and get this a bit more even. And then I'm also just gonna felt under his arms a bit more as well. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is turn him over and I'm going to add more bulk to his bottom and I'm just going to use the same technique that I used a moment ago with the, the belly and the hips. I'm just going to take my wall and I'm just going to fold it over itself. So three, four, let's go with five and then I'm just going to tear away this bit. So five wraps and I'm just going to hold it down and I'm just going to felt that down into position on his bottom. And this piece is narrower, so we're not going all the way up to the top of his back here. But it just gives a bit more shape. And because we haven't properly felted it all down really firmly yet, um, you'll find that it will decrease in size as well. So don't think, oh no, it's going to look really bulky and weird, um, because it will get smaller once we add the top coat. So I'm just felting. I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm felting on a bit of an angle, but I'm still taking my needles out in the same direction that I'm putting them in. So you can felt on an angle. It doesn't always have to be straight down. It's long as you've got your fingers and your hands out of the way. Here's a hand. I'm just going to felt down the sides a bit more just to kind of give a bit more cohesion and blend the wall from the front in with the wall from the back. And you want to keep going until you get to the stage where it looks like this. 
So what you wanna do is you wanna give it a good old felt and you wanna make sure that you have some symmetry there. You don't want any kind of too much lumpiness on one side compared to the other side. So just keep checking it for the symmetry to make sure it's all looking nice and even. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to our head. So we're gonna lie our mouse down again. Sorry, mate, we've got to do some more, more surgery to you. And I'm gonna take some more of our fox sheep. So roughly about this much. And I'm gonna split it in half. So I've got two roughly even pieces, okay. What I'm next gonna do is I'm just gonna fold these over. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. And then I'm just gonna take his head and I'm gonna place this piece on the side, one side of his head, and I'm gonna felt that down into the head. Like so. Cautious of fingers. And then once it's secured into place, just move your fingers out of the way and just felt it down and really concentrate on getting it really felted into that neck area again. We don't want to have kind of like no neck, like a really thick neck. You want to make sure that you've you've got that that clear definition between the neck and the chest. So just keep felting it into place. And then once it's felted down, just get rid of that looseness there. We want to do the same thing on the, on the other side. So take your wool and just felt it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the piece measures, I forgot to tell you a moment ago, it's going to be about an inch by an inch. Um, oh, it's about one and a half inches. Oh, by about one and a half inches, so that's half an inch out. So same thing. So the loose ends where you've kind of got the kind of Swiss roll look, that's what you want to have at the top and the bottom. Hold it on its side, and then I'd like to felt the top part down first, just to secure it into place. And then gradually work my fingers downwards as I felt downwards against the head. And then I'm just going to move my hand out of the way completely and then I'm just going to felt down those final, those final pieces. So you've got the first part of your head wrapped. What we want to do now is go back to our fox sheep and we're going to do another one that's going to go down the centre of his head. So I'm just going to pull out some more wool. I'm going to stretch it out and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, let's go five. This is going to be the same measurements as we did a moment ago, maybe slightly larger, let's just check. So it's uh, just over one and a half inches by two inches this time. And I'm going to place it so that the Swiss roll parts that are folded over are going sideways out. So the folded over parts are kind of going upwards and below the, where the neck is. And again, I'm just going to fold, um, felt that down. Still using my medium needles, okay? Fine needles would take too long. They're too fine, so you'd be felting forever and a day. So stick with the medium needles, or you can even go um, coarse needles if you wanted to. I prefer the medium needles purely because I feel that I have more control over the shape of what I'm making with the medium needles. I find that coarse needles can be a bit much sometimes. This is just personal preference for me, to be honest with you. Um, so um, I tend to go for medium. And you could go for a third needle if you wanted to. I prefer just to use the two because then I can use them side by side when I'm going into gaps and things. But you could absolutely use three if you really wanted to. So I'm just going to felt that down into place. Let's give that top bit a bit of a felt again. Felting around the neck a bit more. Okay. So that's the next piece that's been added. We're going to add another layer to the head now. So I'm going to fold a second piece and I'm going to fold it again. One, two, three, four. So just four this time. So what I'm going to do with this piece is I'm going to place it above the neck now so that it's coming up more towards the top of the head. 
and felt that day. You don't want to compact this too much because when we want to add our eyes and mouth later on, um, we're going to struggle if it's too firmly felted. So just make sure that it's it's felted down, it's tacked down, it's not going to go anywhere and you've got some shape to it, but don't make it really, really tight. Again, I said, you, as I said earlier, you want a bit of a medium squidge. You don't want it to be rock solid. Okay, I'm just going to go a bit more over the top. And then finally, I'm just going to go back to my brush mat and I'm just going to make one last piece. So I'm going to take some more of the fox sheep and I'm going to layer it on top of each other. And I'm going to create myself a little circle. And what we're doing here is we're just creating the kind of the nose of the mouse. So we're making it nice and pointed. And then I'm just going to fold these pieces in on themselves. So we've got a relatively thick circular shape. Like this, okay? So it's not very big, it's about probably just about over an inch. And then we're gonna place this in the center. So we don't wanna go right on the neck because that'll look weird. It wants to be roughly in the center of the mouse's head so you've got about a centimeter between it the bottom of it and the and the neck area and just felt that down so i like to start around the edges first and then once i've got my edges tacked down i then like to go to the middle From the front, you can see he's really starting to take shape now, but from the back, he's got this kind of flat head. So what we want to do is we want to add another wrap just to the very back, just to kind of help him out so he's not flat headed. So I'm just going to take a piece and it's a bit of kind of gauging how much you need here. I'm going to probably just go with two folds. I'm not going to go in loads. I'm just going to place that so it covers the back of his head and then just felt that down. It just gives a nice smooth finish as well, where you've added all those, those layers to him a moment ago. Spin it round. So the twisted needles are my favorite, but you can also get something called a twisted star needle. That's very good as well. Um, and it's also a really good speedy felter. So I think some places do like multi-packs of needles and it's good to just try them out and see which ones you prefer. Because, you know, everybody has a preference really. Not everybody likes the same thing. So try all sorts of different needles. Eventually you'll find your favorites and then stick with those. So there we go. His head is looking a little bit more neater. Okay, so the next stage of your mouse is complete and it's starting to get quite satisfying now because you can really see him taking shape. So if you found this video useful, please like it and please subscribe to my channel because then you get notifications of when I'm doing more tutorials and I am posting daily at the moment so it really keeps you on top of what I'm doing. But in the meantime, I will say goodbye for now and I will see you in the next instalment of Mouse Tutorial later on. Bye.